Friends, today we will talk about the high carbohydrate dietary approach to control type 2 diabetes. There are some doctors and scientists around the world who believe that by eating plant-based high carbohydrate diet type 2 diabetes can be controlled. Dr. John McDougall is one of the American doctors who recommend starch-based diet to control type 2 diabetes. Dr. John McDougall believes that human beings are designed to crave starchy foods like potatoes and rice. According to Dr. McDougall, all vegetables and fruits are okay to eat but he advises against all animal products, fish, meat, eggs, dairy. He also advises against refined flour products and he, advises all, he also advises against nuts like cashew, almonds and olives because they are high in fat. Dr. Michael Greger is one of the other doctors you know, who believes in plant-based high-carb diet to control type 2 diabetes. Only difference is similar to Dr. McDougall's diet, but only difference is Dr. Greger believes nuts are okay to eat in moderation. Another well-known doctor who believes in this kind of a dietary approach is Dr. Coldwell Asseltin. Dr. Coldwell Asseltin believes that if you want to have a happy and healthy life without any diseases or taking any medication, you have to avoid all animal products. You have to have a diet that's rich in vegetables, fruits, and especially crucifix. Pasta is okay to eat, especially crucifix vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, sprouts, these kind of things, you know. There are so many other doctors in the world who believe in a similar kind of a principle, this plant-based high carbohydrate diet approach. Today, we will analyze the scientific evidence. Do carbohydrate cause insulin resistance? First of all, let's have a look into this study where the scientists found out that high intakes of fructose can reduce insulin sensitivity. Although somewhat lower intakes may affect serum TGs. TG stands for triglycerides. We'll talk about triglycerides in some other video. And they also found out overconsumption of fructose as a contributor to an excessive energy intake is linked with increased liver and muscle fat contents. It simply means people who eat too much fructose end up having more energy than they are utilizing and it leads to this extra energy being stored in the liver and muscle as an additional fat, which is again thought to be the cause of insulin resistance. So eating too much fructose reduces our insulin sensitivity and it leads to deposition of additional fat in liver and muscle tissue that can cause insulin resistance. Similar effect is seen with glucose. So scientists concluded, they came to the conclusion that Maybe this whole phenomena of reduction in insulin sensitivity and this extra fat lead in deposition in liver and muscle tissue causing insulin resistance is due to carbohydrate consumption or maybe it is simply due to energy overconsumption. In the next study, 84 participants were included who had obesity and type 2 diabetes and were randomly assigned to a low carb ketogenic diet or low glycemic index reduced calorie diet. Low carb ketogenic diet group, they were having less than 20 gram carbs per day and ketogenic simply is high fat diet. Low glycemic index reduced calorie diet means they were having carbohydrates that were actually slowly released in the body as sugars. They, don't, they raise your sugars slowly in the blood and they don't raise your sugars too much. The caloric deficit of 500 calories means if you need 2000 calories to maintain your weight at 90, 90 kilo per day, you were having 1500 calories every day. This study was over six week periods. What scientists found out that low carb ketogenic diet group had better improvement of the blood glucose control and many of their medications were eliminated or reduced as compared to low glycemic index, index caloric deficit group. What we need to keep in mind is out of 84 participants, only 49 participants completed this study. Now I want to show you an image that actually explains what kind of research is the topmost quality. If we have a look at this image, meta-analysis and systematic reviews are at the top. Then after them, randomized control trials, cohort studies, case control studies, and so on. This study was a randomized control trial. Now. Although we found out in these two studies that yes, if you reduce your carbohydrate consumption in type 2 diabetes and reduce your sugar consumption, your glycemic control gets better. But however, we still haven't found out that eating high carbohydrate diet 
causes insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes. Now, next piece of evidence is a report published by SACN. SACN stands for Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition and they are based in United Kingdom. Now, they published a report in 2015. Since 2015, not much had changed in terms of diabetes-related food guidance. We can trust the report published by SACN, number one, because it's a government body and they don't have any financial ties to food or pharmaceutical industry. Number two, it's a meta-analysis and we just learned meta-analysis is at the top of the research. SACN published in their report that no significant association was found between total carbohydrate intake as grams per day and incidence of type 2 diabetes mellitus. So simply mean by eating carbohydrate do not cause type 2 diabetes. SACN also reported that no significant effect is reported of diets differing in the proportion of carbohydrate intake on impaired glucose tolerance in any of the trials. So what they are saying is by eating high carbohydrate diet, it does not impair your body's ability to process glucose. SACN concluded that high carbohydrate low fats diet do not affect fasting blood glucose concentration. So if you're eating a diet that's high in carbohydrate, low in fat, or you are eating a diet that's high in fat, low in carbohydrates, it does not affect your fasting blood glucose concentration. There were many other research articles that were similar to the research we just discussed. But the conclusion is, yes, plant-based high-carbohydrate low-fat diets can be used to control type 2 diabetes and carbohydrates do not cause insulin resistance. But the key points to take away from today's video is, if you are using this plant-based high-carb low-fat dietary approach to control type 2 diabetes, then you must not eat any processed carbs because processed carbs, although they are carbs, but they are bad for your health. Minimize your sugar intake. Avoid all animal products, milk, cheese, eggs, and do not use oils in your cooking. Oils are bad for your cooking. Eat nuts in moderation. Thank you, this is all for today.